Hi, it's Wendy Jensen here with Thriving After Mormonism. And the topic I want to share with you today is how leaving the church is going to affect your personality. And it's a, an important topic because um, we don't realize to, to what extent it, it affects our personality or even how. And so I'm going to talk about those things in just a minute here. But for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Wendy Jensen. And I am a life skills coach in, in the area of personal development and the healing arts. And I've been doing this for about 14 or 15 years now. Um, but I had my own faith crisis out of the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, in about 2015. And at that time, most of my clients, my full business was primarily serving the LDS population. And so when I had the guts to come out of the closet, um, I actually lost all of my business. It was such a, a pivotal time for me, and uh, I could see how there was so much needed coaching and um, counseling and information needed to help people transition. It's a hard transition. Let's face it, it's very complex transitioning out of a fundamentalist authoritarian religion. And so I decided to put all my energy and effort and my focus into helping people who are transitioning out to help them find their footing, to get reconnected with their intuition, and to create a, a thriving, happy, healthy, productive post-LDS community. And so that's my mission. So if this, if this includes you and something you're interested in, please um, subscribe to my, my YouTube channel. But also I have a, a, a book that I've written down below called A Peculiar Transition. Healing the Trauma of Mormon Faith Crisis. And I also have um, support groups on Facebook and some other formats that might help you. So I do a lot of my facilitating through these videos, but I also do online group coaching and private coaching, uh, workshops and retreats. So if this is something you're interested in or want to get connected with our growing community, um, please click on the links below and see what serves you. Okay, for our topic today how and why leaving the church is going to affect your personality. It's really interesting that people who have uh, lost their religion, so to speak, as the backdrop of their life, it is a very pivotal moment. So we could call the life before this epic crisis or transition first life and the life after it second life. That's how epic this time in your life is. And so you are at the apex of, of establishing new beliefs. And you, now you're an adult. Now you have this fully functioning, mature mind, and you're able to choose for yourself. Um, however, the way that you are going to start believing and adjust those beliefs is going to affect who you are becoming. You are now um, in charge of the personality and the, the identity that you're creating. And so it's interesting that even though people who lose their religion and they have this crisis, if you were to ask them, even at the hard part of their crisis, after they've lost friends, they've lost family. In my case, it's my business. Other people lose their business as well. They've lost their, their, uh, their understanding about God and the universe. They've uh, kind of lost relevance with the, in the community. Um, they've, you know, really, their relationships mostly are, are what suffer. And their ability to just understand the existential dilemma we're all in in this world. And so even though they've lost all that, and it feels really unstable, and it can be scary, um, about 100% of them, <laughs> I know all my clients, and I've heard other uh, people who facilitate in this way say that, that nobody would ever want to go back. So if you wonder why that is, why they wouldn't want to go back to the simplicity of the theology of the religion is because for the first time in a long time, you're feeling your soul expand and you're, you're experiencing a surge of empowerment. You see, if knowledge is power, then self-knowledge is self-empowerment. And so you're starting to understand 
um, more how you are in the world and how you're situated in the world. And if you will, your consciousness and awareness of the global situation that we're in and even the cosmic situation we, we're in is much bigger than you ever imagined. And so there's no way that even if you could, you would not want to try and shove all of this as expanded awareness back into the tiny box of your theology. And so that is why this is in a crucial and important time in your life. And you are establishing new beliefs. So a belief is an emotion and a thought kind of enmeshed together. So you, you have a thought and, and incorporated into it that is an emotion and you're having it over and over going repeatedly in your mind until it becomes a belief. And then after in time, it becomes a mood. So you might feel yourself in a bad mood or a sad mood or a happy mood. It's because prior to that mood, you were, you were, um, uh, you were entertaining a belief. And so those beliefs become a mood and that mood in time becomes an attitude. And that attitude has energy, magnitude, amplitude, and it, ha it is interchanging with the bioelectromagnetic um, instruments of the universe and this holographic, holographic universe that we live in. This attitude starts to interchange and interact with it until um, eventually it becomes a, a personality or your personal reality. Personality, personal reality. So I want you to remember that. So in the beginning of your religion, let's say in my religion, I'm taught that um, I was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the only true church on the earth that is also um, led by Jesus Christ. And that when I get baptized into this church, I also get the Holy Ghost at baptism through the authority. And so at this time, this is a belief because I have a feeling about that. And I, I have this thought that's been introduced to me and a feeling and I take action with that and it creates a mood. And that mood um, feels good. It feels peaceful. It feels safe. It feels inclusive. It feels like I'm in the right path and I'm doing the right things and I'm becoming a good person. So that creates a happy mood. And as I continue in that mood, it then creates an attitude. And that attitude is interchanging with the world. And unfortunately, part of your transitioning and part of your faith crisis is including this idea that, you know, those thoughts are not inclusive. And how could it be that we're the only ones in the church or in the world that that have this uh, agreement with Jesus Christ and you start to that things don't start to fit in that attitude anymore but you, because you're not aware of it you're sending off this vibration that you're better than other people you have something special that um there's just like this invisible arrogance and insensitivity to the rest of the world. And you're putting that out there until you create a personality that you're not even aware of. That's kind of uh, insensitive and arrogant <laughs> and it's exclusive and it's very, it can become very divisive and we'll fight for the rights to continue to believe in that way and to maintain that attitude and it becomes part of our personality. Well, when you have faith crisis, that's when all those things kind of tumble down and you start to realize how you've positioned yourself in the world in a way that's not really healthy and beneficial to the continued growth and expansion of um, the world. If we're going to do this in peace and harmony with each other, that's really kind, kind of a, a toxic program and it's not working for us um, in this world that we're developing and growing in and, and growing together in. So that's one example of how a belief can turn into a personality, an identity. So here you are in the middle of your faith crisis and you are establishing new beliefs. Now, if that belief um, is kind of infused with the feel, feeling of betrayal, with the feeling of the lies being taught, with the irritation and annoyance of the things that you bought into that you no longer can believe, um, then that creates a mood. 
And that mood can put you into a state of anger, resentment, depression, and that mood in time, if it's not caught, <laughs> in time becomes an attitude. And remember, when it becomes an attitude, it's amplified and it's sending signals out into the universe and it's starting to create, um, the, this attitude starts to create um, resonance or dissonance with joy and happiness until eventually it becomes your personality. So a lot of people that are still inside the influence of the church will look at somebody who's developed that attitude and they'll say, oh my goodness, they're so arrogant and insensitive, irritated and bitter. And that gives them evidence and proof that, of course, you know, because you left the church, that means that, you know, Satan has got a hold of you or you've got an evil spirit of possession or you've been deceived. But in actuality, it's the new belief that, um, that you've been hurt or that you're a victim of uh, the religion or um, the toxic things about the religion that have created that attitude. And that is a very common direction that many of us take because part of our waking up is understanding that everything we've been taught is not necessarily true. So I want to give you an idea of how we can change this because if you're like me, I don't want to have that personality. I don't want, that personality is not going to be helpful for the for my family members that are still in the church, and it's not gonna be helpful for um, other people that I see in religious situations that I can see are limiting. And so that attitude and that, that personality is not gonna be helpful. So I wanna introduce something to you that will help you shift it. And that is to see your faith crisis as an epic opportunity for your growth and development and that without that faith crisis you would still be stuck in that paradigm in that in that world and you would not be growing and you would not be able to uh, think critically for uh, yourself without the filter of that religion you would not be able to be expanding and growing and uh, have the freedoms to now make decisions to become the sovereign authority in your life. So when you believe at the core level that your faith crisis is the greatest thing that ever happened to you, again, it's a belief, a thought, and an emotion. That thought should make you super happy and super excited about your future. And if you can feel that way about your faith crisis or your faith expansion, I will call it, um, then you start to create a mood. And that mood is anticipation. It's excitement. It's um, joy. It's uh, curiosity and wonder about what, I, what can I create now that um, I have these new wings. And so then you have this mood. And eventually that mood, if you continue to focus and feed that belief, and you have that mood, it will shift into an attitude. And it will start interacting with the universe in a way that's going to bring forth uh, better connections, joyful connections, expansive wonder and curiosity um, helps you to continue seeing the big picture because you're not stuck in re resentment and anger. And as you continue to have that attitude, it starts to turn into your personality and your new identity in the world, your personal reality. And so, again, it all comes down to you are at a critical junction in your life with this faith crisis. You can choose to focus on the trauma that's happened to you. And I get that it's trauma. I am not dismissing the pain and the struggle and the grief that's associated with faith, faith crisis. Please do not think that that's what I'm saying. It, it, can, it is very difficult. But eventually, if you can see it, when you start to see that it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you and that it's a perfect opportunity for you to use your adult mind to choose what it is you're now going to believe, at that moment, you get to decide and determine what your personality is going to be. What is your new identity? So I hope this helps you. Again, if it does, please connect with me and we'll learn more and we will continue 
um, navigating through this faith transition. Thanks for being with me today. Bye.